does Dave Allen stand a chance against Louise Ortiz? Let's find out. I am T Cozy, and this is with just 15 defeats. <laughs> This is with just 15 defeats and I am T Cozy. Great to have you on board and in today's show I'm going to be discussing Luis Ortiz versus Dave Allen. Uh, the heavyweight fight that's been added to the 10th of December um, Anthony Joshua card. Now if you've got any comments on this fight click on the comments section, leave me a comment, start the debate. Okay, if you like this video, click on the big thumbs up. Very, very much appreciated. And if you want to see any more um, preview videos, go across to my channel, Tikozy Boxing. Click on that subscribe ch channel button and um, get involved with any of the videos we've got there. Got all the big previews for the fights for the December the 10th. Um, big, big night in heavyweight boxing, one of the biggest this year. Um, we've obviously got Anthony Joshua versus Eric Molina. We've got Wyatt versus Chisora on the undercard, as well as this fight, Alan and Ortiz. We've also got Joseph Parker and um, Andy Ruiz on the other side of the world. And we've got some other bits and bobs coming along um, later. We've also got Kubrat Pula versus Samuel Peter, which is actually before the December the 10th card, uh, Stavern, Povetkin, we've got, uh, and also on the channel there's a whole load of other videos. So if you like any of that, remember just click all the buttons, get involved, comment, blah de blah So let's move on, just a bit of a quick video on Dave Allen and uh, Louise Ortiz. Um, now, it was perfectly obvious that Louise Ortiz's opponent for the seventh attempt was never going to be a high profile um, name, mainly because he'd only fought, he's only fought under two weeks from when I'm recording this. So, and the next fight is in a couple of weeks. So there's only about a month's um, breathing space. And we know that when we start to go up the levels, the boxers do not fight that regularly. They're not fighting on a month-by-month -month basis. They're fighting once, twice, two, maybe a max of four times a year. So four weeks notice is very, very unusual. But it's mainly to do with the fact that, obviously, Ortiz has jumped promoters to Matchroom. And they've probably got a, um, a four-fight plan, what I believe is a four-fight plan. Obviously, the Malik Scott fight. He had just a few weeks ago, he's got this Dave Allen fight. Then I believe, what, what I think is probably going to happen is that if the Anthony Joshua Klitschko fight goes ahead, Ortiz will be on the undercard of that. And I reckon it will be against a high profile fighter. We're talking definitely a top 15, top 20 guy, someone with credibility before potential unification with Joshua at the end of the year. Okay, so I think that's possibly what's going to happen. So this fight's come about, it's quite unusual, also partly to do with the fact that just a, two months ago, Dave Allen announced that he was retiring or semi-retiring from the sport due to depression and gambling issues, all that sort of stuff, which is can be very, very difficult to deal with. Um, he made the announcement and it seemed like as soon as he made the announcement he was trying to call out call out people trying to get involved etc so i don't know it was a bit of a, a strange -ish, strange announcement to make okay so let's just talk about the fight so let's talk about this potential fight and in doing so let's talk about the two guys let's just quickly talk about Luis ortiz um what we know about him and it will help us to determine how the fight's going to go so Luis ortiz 26 and 0, 22 stoppages. So he's got a very, very high knockout ratio. He's been a professional for six years. And he's also, on top of that, he's got over 300 
amateur bouts. Okay, so he is fairly experienced. Okay, he's six foot four. He's two hundred and forty pounds ish, um, and he's about thirty seven years old. Um, so he's a he's a big lad. Um, he's in great shape. He's incredibly powerful. He's incredibly thick set, right? And we've got. With the thing with Ortiz is that there's this amazing hype train that's been building and building and building. A lot of people regard him as the best heavyweight out there. Okay, they regard him as the best, despite the fact that he hasn't beaten anyone, any top ten guys. I know a lot, the other guys haven't done that. Okay, the other guys haven't done that, but he hasn't done it. He seems to be slowly building up his level of position this year. Okay, okay, and. Um, yeah, so the, the hype train is the hype train's building. Um, a lot of people are getting very excited about him, and sometimes I, I'm I've, I say this in every Ortiz video. I'm somewhat apprehensive um, because whilst you see a lot of good stuff, is he the baddest man in the division? Do you know what I mean? Could he beat everyone? The answer is yes, he could. But the fact is, I could say that about all the other top top guys. Okay, so all of the top top guys can beat all of the other top guys. It's as simple as that, right? But that's when we get a bit tricky, right? So what has Ortiz got to offer? As I say, he's powerful. He's got a powerful jab. He's got a good range of shots. He prefers to fight on the outside, okay? And he's got good feet. He has got good feet, but possibly not great movement. So he can get into good positions, but sometimes he's kind of left in bad positions, right? Um, now, his style is fairly efficient, okay? He mixes long periods of inactivity with explosive power and combinations, right? And that's how he's managed to stop a number of the people. Um, he's got the ability to close the show. When he decides to kind of amp it to the next level, there is a barrage of punches, combinations. They're slick, they're accurate, they're on the button, okay? One of the few problems with Ortiz is that he hasn't really been chin checked at all. Now, obviously, guys have hit him, but no one's really hit him in a way that looked like he was in danger. And he's managed to kind of avoid a lot of the real serious um, uh, punches. He's not great on the inside, and because he kind of goes inactive and people question his stamina, um, we've seen in a lot of fights that you end up getting. That, that he gets quite close into his opponent, there gets a bit of infighting, and he's not massively effective in defending himself in those positions. Now, obviously, people would say that the infighting with Jennings, he managed to knock him down um, by in doing so, but Jennings managed to land a lot of a lot of punches. Yes, he didn't dang, it didn't hurt him, but he managed to land quite a few in those positions and realistically someone like Ortiz shouldn't really be putting himself in that position and we can only put that down to stamina related issues um, that's all it can be right so he's got three interesting fights where he's stepped up his level of competition we saw that firstly with Jennings um, he managed to hurt him multiple occasions but it was a tough fight there was a lot of infighting um, he was unable to keep the fight at distance um, for any period of time, and that's why Jennings got got some joy. But ultimately, he was able to hurt him and stop him. Right, Thompson again. Tony Thompson. When he fought Tony Thompson, seriously low output. Seriously low output from um, Ortiz. He was looking for the KO, and ultimately, in my opinion. Tony Thompson quit on his backside, right? Malik Scott. Malik Scott, now that fight was a bit of a joke. A lot of people think it was the biggest joke going, right? But Malik Scott seriously frustrated Luis Ortiz. He really frustrated him. Um, and basically, um, ultimately, a better fighter would have been able to even, should have been able to frustrate Ortiz even more. I've always said that a good boxer should be able to beat Ortiz. Good movement, dancing around the ring, staying out of range, boxing clever. 
um, they can be Ortiz, right? And Malik's got kind of tried that, but he tried it to kind of like, he 10 x it, right? And he was just moving all the place, trying to not get any sort, into, into sort, any sort of action, right? And in the end, Scott actually ran out of steam himself, and Ortiz managed to land shots and really tire him down. And in the end, um, it went to the decision. All I will say is that Ortiz wasn't able to stop him when he had the opportunity. He did land. He did drop um, Scott multiple occasions. And Scott was on the canvas multiple occasions of his own choosing. Um, just wasn't able to put him, put him out there. And also, he kind of struggled to land flush shots. Scott did enough to avoid these shots and kind of stay at range to a certain extent. Right, so let's move on to Dave Allen. Now, Dave Allen's kind of the complete opposite. Dave Allen's the complete opposite. He's got a record of nine, one, and one. Okay, so he's going to nine victories, six of which he's got the stoppage. He's been a pro for four years. This is interesting. He's been a pro for four years. Been, sorry, he's been a pro for four years, and he's only got, he's only had 11 fights. Now, usually in this day and age, um, when you're building up a fighter, in the first couple of years, you have loads and loads of fights. Even if they're against bums, you're just building that experience. And they haven't done that with Alan for certain, however reason that is, right? On top of that, Dave Allen has real, really no amateur background. I, I read something that he's got like 10 amateur fights or something, um, was offered, um, a place on a GB team, turned it down, whatever, became a pro at the age of 20 years old. Um, he's only 24 now. Um, he's about the same size. He's about the same size as Ortiz, 6'3", 240. So they're going to be very, very similar size in the ring. But they're probably going to look very, very different because of what we know about Ortiz's demeanor, right? Now, what do we know about Alan? Now, obviously, we know very limited because he has fought a limited opposition and as you say, a limited amount of fights. So it is somewhat difficult, right? We know he's raw. We know that he's limited. He's got a kind of old school style, both hands up, moves forward and pushes out that jab. He literally pushes it out and kind of pushes into it. He leans into it, right? And he kind of builds everything off that. He's got a reputation as being a tough man um, for because he went the distance with Dillian White. Um, he's also, I'm pretty sure there was rumours that he had dropped someone in training. I can't, I can't remember who, who that was. Um, but anyway, um, he's only got one fight of any note. This is the disappointing thing for him, obviously. Um, he's got one fight of any note. That's against Dillian White earlier this year. And that was a one-sided fight. Dillian White won pretty much every single round. He won it fairly easy. It was comprehensive. Dave Allen offered almost no offensive output. Um, and I can, I'm can i sure he must be so disappointed in his own performance um, because it was really just a training session for Dillian White. He was moving all over the place. Um, he was staying out of range for most of it. He was landing all kinds of shots. But Dillian White, he lacks a bit of power. So he wasn't able to close the show. He wasn't able to close the show. So we don't really know whether... Someone with some serious power will be able to stop Dave Allen. It's possible that that could be the case. Now, as I say, after this fight, Dave Allen announced that he was retiring because of um, depression um, and gambling addictions, all that sort of stuff. So you'd think he would be out of the ring for quite a long time. He wasn't. Um, he's and so this fight's been announced. It looks like he's been looking for a fight. So as I said earlier, I think it was a bit strange that he made that announcement um, when he might not have had any intention. But then again, he may have. They may have um, shown him the money, and he thought it, it, it's too much of a good, a good opportunity to 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 miss. So let's just quickly talk about the routes to victory. Ortiz, he needs to do what he does best. Box at range, stiff, powerful jabs, um, and really try and hurt. And when he can, take the opportunity to close the show, right? And like we've always discussed about Anthony Joshua, I think if he gets into a position where it looks like he's he's landing bombs, I think the referee could stop it, 
right? Now, Dave Allen, it's difficult to, to work out what he needs to do. Now, we've seen that Ortiz possibly has stamina issues. He's not great on the inside. So you would say that Dave Allen needs to basically survive. Survive. He needs to move. Um, he needs to possibly get on the inside. But what we've seen is that Dave Allen, not particularly great on the inside. In the fights I've seen of Dave Allen, doesn't really offer much on the inside, okay, or anything that's damaging or hurtful, right? Um, we have also know that Ortiz is a good counter-puncher. So Dave Allen, perpetually moving forward, is going to walk straight into those problems. Um, so, I don't know, it's a very, very difficult fight for Allen, and that's reflected in the odds, the odds, right? So, Luis Ortiz, to win this, is one to a hundred. One to a hundred. That's a crazy. So for every hundred that you put down, you only get one back. That is insane, right? And Allen is only 16 to one, right? So the odds, that's 116 to one. It's one of the widest swings in odds of any preview that I've done on this channel. Um, so they think that Ortiz is definitely going to win. He's almost 100% that he's going to win this fight. How he's going to win it, my initial thoughts is that it's a stoppage, probably a referee stoppage, um, or a referee kind of stops it before um, Alan is sparked out, right? That's the way I feel this is going to go. So if you like this video, click on the thumbs up. Get involved in the comments. Check out all the other videos. Cause we've got loads of previews on the channel. It's been great to be with you today. Um, I'm C Cozy, and this has been with just 15 defeats.